Hi everyone, and happy Nitric Acid Day. Well, sad Nitric Acid Day, actually. I, I really don't like Nitric Acid Day at all, guys. Um, nitric Acid Day, of course, if you haven't guessed, occurs on the day in which my laboratory runs out of nitric acid, and that happens to be today. We... The reason I don't like making nitric acid is not because it's an overly complicated synthesis, it's just that it's so simple and it's boring, and I've done it a million times. But uh, maybe you haven't seen it before, and maybe you'd like to know how to make some nitric acid, so I decided to show you. Anyway, uh, because I don't like making nitric acid very much, when I do make it, I make a lot of it at once. So I bring out some some pretty heavy glassware, so I thought I'd make a video about it and show you. To make my nitric acid, I use uh, sulfuric acid's action on potassium nitrate to form potassium bisulfate and nitric acid. You can also use this equilibrium down here, where you get, uh, because of course, uh, Sulfuric acid is a diprotic acid, so you're able to generate two, two moles of nitric acid and uh, one mole of potassium sulfate. Unfortunately, potassium sulfate solubility in all this is about ten times less than the potassium bisulfate. And so despite the fact that you could form two moles of nitric acid, um, not only is the equilibrium for potassium sulfate versus bisulfate very small, but also the, uh, the low solubility of the bisulfate tends to entrap a lot of that nitric acid, and this, this method ends up being a big mess. So uh, I prefer using this top stoichiometry here. The end goal of this is to produce 68% uh, azeotropic nitric acid, and I'll explain that in a little bit. So I don't really mind adding water to the start of this reaction to ensure that, the, that I get the maximum recovery of nitric acid. Because remember, water and nitric acid form an azeotrope, and uh, they will carry over together during the distillation. So to start, I add about 9 moles of water to, to this side of the reaction, and then uh, when I'm distilling off the nitric acid, a lot of that water comes with. Now, eventually, the, the reactants will get so thick in the boiling pot that they begin to foam up. And uh, you obviously don't want the foam to be reaching the condenser or anything because that makes a huge mess. I've broken a lot of glass that way because of uh, a deposited potassium bisulfate getting stuck in the joints. So at that point, the reaction is stopped and everything is left to cool down. And you're left with almost, almost pure potassium bisulfate. And, of course, the nitric acid, which, since it came over with all that water, is fairly dilute. Uh, and this is what I was getting to before, is that the, that dilute nitric acid forms an azeotrope with water, a uh, constant boiling mixture that, mixture that is. It boils at 121 Celsius at 68% concentration of nitric acid. Um, so what you can do is you can take that dilute nitric acid and put it back into the distillation apparatus and ramp up the temperature, and you'll first start to get over um, just water at 100 Celsius, but then slowly that temperature will climb, and once it hits 121 Celsius, uh, the concentration of nitric acid will be at 68%. And as long as you collect from only there and out, then you end up with a very well-known concentration of nitric acid, assuming you know uh, the atmospheric pressure of the day. But again, I'm not using this as an analytical reagent or anything. So that's, uh, that's pretty much the preparation of 68% nitric acid in a nutshell, and that's about uh, what I'm going to do. So let's get to the lab and, uh, and carry it out. So this is the monster rig that I'm going to be using for this nitric acid run. Uh, I'm going to be running nitric acid on a 4 molar scale for each of these flasks back here. I've got two independent heating mantles, each with a 1 liter flask. Uh, they're both equipped with a still head that has a, a thermocouple type uh, thermometer well. That's connected to a simple Liebig condenser, which is fine for these purposes. Cooling water jackets, um, two little bendy adapters here. We don't really need to run a vacuum or anything, but that's uh, just the ones I happen to have. And then a Claisen adapter here, which allows me to collect both uh, outputs of or the outputs of both condensers into a single flask. And this flask is a two neck, so I can uh, open this port and take samples periodically if I need to do so. For the four molar scale that I'm running this on, each flask is going to require first. 200 milliliters of tap water and 404 grams of potassium nitrate. A little distilled water helps to rinse the potassium nitrate down into the flask, which will ensure a good seal on the joint. Next comes 232 milliliters of 93% concentrated sulfuric acid. Add this slowly and carefully because it will be highly exothermic and some nitric acid may escape the flask. Mine's a bit cloudy because I use drain opener, but that's fine. 
You'll notice the contents of the flask will change to a slightly brownish color, and this is from the nitrogen oxides that are formed as the nitric acid decomposes at high temperature. I will now refit the still heads for distillation. Both stills are now turned on to heat at maximum, which will bring the contents of these reaction flasks to a boil. Now these flasks, if you remember, have an equilibrium set up between sulfuric acid, nitric acid, potassium bisulfate, and potassium nitrate. And as they boil, the most volatile component will come off first, in that case nitric acid, which will drive the reaction to, the completion, to completion. The nitric acid that boils out will travel through the still head and into these condensers where it will condense to a liquid and drip down into this collection flask here where we'll collect the crude nitric acid for further processing. This distillation must absolutely be done in a fume hood because the high temperatures involved act upon the nitric acid which cause it to decompose into some nitrogen oxides. Those nitrogen oxides are fairly poisonous as a gas and uh, you can see that the apparatus will slowly fill with them as the reaction pots begin to heat up. At first, the nitrogen oxides will begin to build up in the apparatus and tint them a nice dark color. This will go away as soon as the nitric acid starts coming over because the nitric acid vapors will carry it through the apparatus and it will end up dissolved in our crude nitric acid. Everything in the flasks will melt and the distillation will eventually stabilize until nitric acid is collecting at a fairly steady rate. This distillation needs to be monitored very carefully because it has a propensity to foam up and when that foam reaches a condenser, it uh, deposits a bunch of potassium bisulfate, which almost instantly clogs it. That causes a huge amount of back pressure in the boiling flask and could cause an explosion involving corrosive acids, which is very bad. Also, once the whole thing is cooled down, the potassium bisulfate becomes almost impossible to remove and actually expands on cooling and tends to crack glass. And I learned that the hard way, as you can probably see by the glassware graveyard back there. Anyway. The distillation should proceed until the foam, which you can see here, this is a normal amount of foam. If the foam reaches a, a nice dense white color and starts to reach maybe half, about halfway between where the liquid level is now and the top of the flask, the heating should be stopped immediately or uh, the heating should be slowed down. And if that doesn't s cause the foam to subside, then uh, the distillation is, is essentially complete and can be stopped. I've stopped both distillations, and you can see this one had started to foam, so I rapidly turned the heat off, and uh, I got a little foaming up, but uh, not enough to get in the condenser, which is good. So, uh, and you can see this is substantially turned to a solid, and that means that most of its water is gone. That's almost pure potassium bisulfate there. If we come around to this one, you can see that it's still uh, just a syrupy, viscous liquid, but will soon uh, have the same fate as this other one. And down here we've collected approximately uh, 650 milliliters of concentrated nitric acid. Now we can say a few things about this concentrated nitric acid here, and that uh, had we collected the pure nitric acid at the density of 1.5, we'd have collected 504 grams of it, which would yield 336 milliliters. And this is clearly more than 336 milliliters. And since we added water to the beginning of the reaction, we can assert that the rest of it is probably water. Um, we do know that nitric acid boils with a 68% azeotrope, so if we had con collected the azeotrope, which is unlikely considering the concentration of salts that are in these pots here, um, we'd have collected 529 milliliters. So not only can we assert that we've collected most of the nitric acid, but we've also collected uh, enough water to yield this, uh, to give nitric acid at a concentration slightly less than that of its 68% azeotrope. So this is probably about 50% nitric acid, and it's ready for further distillation and purification. I recommend disassembling and washing the apparatus as soon as physically possible. Uh, definitely in a good view hood because of the nitric acid fumes present and uh, the nitrogen oxides. But this will prevent the glassware joints from, from freezing together as they cool down, which happens uh, for some reason quite often during this, this synthesis. The remainder of the reaction will coalesce into a solid brick in the boiling flask. This is essentially pure sodium bisulfate with a little bit of nitric acid, as you can see by the yellowing color of the decomposition of the acid. And uh, I'm not really going to save this because bisulfates are pretty cheap. Now, like I said about the bisulfates, this is about 10 times more soluble in water than the sodium sulfate if you were to have used the other stoichiometric uh, quantities there. So this washes out of the flask quite easily with hot water.
and that's all there is to it. A simple distillation apparatus is now set up with the nitric acid in the boiling flask. Now this nitric acid is less than its azeotropic concentration of 68%. We've determined this to be about 50%. So what's going to happen is initially water will start to boil off, and then the still head temperature will slowly climb to about 121C, whereupon the azeotrope of 68% nitric acid, which is what we want, will be given off. So I'll collect the first fraction up until, oh, about 118C, um, and then discard that because it will contain mostly water and only a little bit of nitric acid, and then I'll switch it out from my nitric acid storage container and distill the rest of the acid. And at that point we'll know that the nitric acid, assuming that we're at atmospheric pressure, is at its 68% azeotrope and very well ready to use. Now those nitrogen oxides that are coloring this brown will also leave since the solubility of gases decreases with the increase of heat in a liquid. So we'll uh, automatically drive these nitrogen oxides off as uh, as the process continues. If you really wanted to, you can actually bubble air through this using like a fish tank bubbler or something like that to uh, remove the nitrogen oxides prior to distillation, but I've never really found this necessary. I've also added a stir bar which will help prevent bumping. You can use boiling chips too. I should also mention that uh, because I'm equipped with the two-neck flask, I can actually distill some uh, other nitric acid that I've been saving for use. Um, in a previous run that I did uh, about a year ago, I uh, had the foam over issue and ended up with some dirty nitric acid and so I'm going to go ahead and uh, distill that really quickly uh, once this run is over by pouring it through this, uh, this second neck here after the flask is cool. That way I don't have to disassemble all this stuff. We're just now beginning to reflux right at the bottom where the temperature sensor is. I'm getting some condensation up top here and uh, you see we're rapidly climbing to you know, 94 C and our nitrogen oxides are being purged rather effectively. Again, I don't think I need to reiterate, but I will anyway, the need for a good fluid. After about a minute of boiling, you can see that most of the nitrogen oxides have been purged from the nitric acid solution and have been carried out. And uh, the rest of the apparatus is just about purged as well, except for this end arm here. Uh, pretty much anything past wherever the vapor is condensing. And we can see we've got an initial uh, Four run of distillate right here. The uh, distillation here has sort of topped out at about 117, 117.1 according to the thermocouple. Now because of atmospheric pressure and uh, the error in the thermocouple, I believe this to be the azeotrope considering uh, it hasn't moved and I'm still getting lots of distillate. So I went ahead and, and swapped my collection flask out for the, uh, the other beaker here that was collecting the four run and uh, this in itself actually has quite a bit of nitric acid in it, and it's useful for other things, whether you need to clean some glassware with it, remove some basic residues from something, or uh, you just need to test something with some weak nitric acid. So definitely save that and keep it brown. It's, it's good, high-quality nitric acid. Anyway, in here goes the 68% azeotrope stuff, and you can see up here that uh, pretty much all the uh, nitrogen oxides that were dissolved in that liquid are completely gone now, and uh, all that remains to do is just to distill all of this out into here. Now you should never distill a flask t to complete dryness, so I'm going to stop the distillation just before this gets dry. And if you do it right, if you do it correct, uh, correctly enough, anyway, you can uh, stop the distillation just as there's the last bit of liquid left in there, and you waste pretty much nothing. And that's where a lab jack comes in handy because the reason you really don't want to distill the dryness um, with uh, something like this, anyway, is because you will end up heating the flask dry with the heating mantle and uh, the difference in temperature could easily cause a flask to crack, especially if there's drips still coming down from the still head, which there may very well be. So in this case, uh, simply having a lab jack and the ability to lower the mantle uh, almost totally alleviates that problem. And I'm left with just a little bit of nitric acid at 68% and a whole lot more over here. So I've decided to try and remove some of the nitrogen oxides from my nitric acid, and you can see that I'm being fairly successful by sparging it with some air from a, a small fish tank uh, bubbler here. All that's needed is about a minute or two of this, and just bear in mind that anything that you introduce into the air that's going into the nitric acid ends up in the nitric acid. So uh, water, for instance, will dilute the concentration if you do this for a while. My nitric acid is just about water white now. So I'm just about done, and this has only been going for about a minute. So I'm pleased with those results. So this is the final yield of nitric acid. You can see I have just under 600 milliliters um, added to the right about 200 that were left in this jar. Um, 
of nitric acid, of course, at 68%, the azeotrope. Fairly clean, it's actually quite clean because it's been distilled, and this will be ready for uh, making organic nitrates or nitrate esters, things like that, for a number of upcoming videos. I also now have a small amount of, actually 300 milliliters, that's not really a small amount, of right around, I'm guessing this is about 25% nitric acid. And this is for this is the forerun of the distillation. You can see there's a there's a little bit of nitrogen oxides in it, it's got a slight yellowish tinge. And uh, you shouldn't throw this away because this is good for making inorganic nitrates. As long as you have the time to dry, drive the water off of the, uh, the salts that you form, um, you can use this to etch metals and things like that. It's actually really good for that. Before I go, I'm going to actually uh, test the action of my new nitric acid on some uh, small pieces of copper in this flask. So I'll do that now. Well, that's about all I've got for today. You can clearly see the nitric acid is quite concentrated. We're making nitrogen oxides, and we're oxidizing that copper to copper to nitrate. Not bad. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know I enjoyed making it. Um, if you want to see more of these videos, please hit the subscribe button. Feel free to comment at any time. And uh, thanks for watching.